All right, we got some work to do here. Um, I'll have to include some notes that were from the book here, but we'll have a fun question ahead of us. A charged parallel plate capacitor with uniform electric field E equal E in the Z direction is placed in a uniform magnetic field B equal B in the X direction as shown in the figure. Okay, part A. Find the electromagnetic momentum in the space between the plates. B. Now a resistive wire is connected between the plates along the z-axis so that the capacitor slowly discharges. The current through the wire will experience a magnetic force. What is the total impulse delivered to the system during the discharge? All right, let's go ahead and look at this diagram. As you see, parallel plate capacitor, separation distance d, e pointing in the z direction, as you have stated, and uh, b going in the x direction. All right, and then the capacitor has an area of A. All right, pretty well labeled. Uh, again, what we need to know is the pointing vector and the momentum density. All right, let's plug it on through. All right, so if we're looking at the, uh, moment, the electromagnetic momentum density, what we need to do is take the cross product of E and B, okay, as uh, determined here where epsilon naught E cross B, uh, well, you see E and B are, you know, they're just vector components, so they pull them out. And then you have Z cross E, which again goes in the Y hat direction. So if we want to find the, uh, since that was the density, if we want to find the momentum over the, all the space, which is DX, DY, DZ. All right, as you see, we go from 0 to D on the graph. And then from Y, we go from negative Y to Y and negative X to X is our area. And then we plug it on through. Uh, you see, we similar to last question, we get uh, where delta Y and delta X will compose the area of the plate A. So we substitute that in, and we get that the uh, momentum, the electromagnetic, the electromagnetic momentum of the fields is epsilon naught E B A D in the Y hat direction. All right. Again, we're interested in the impulse, so part B, I is equal to zero to infinity F D T. And then uh, if we go ahead and move it through, we saw what um, F was with regards to the um, uh, the force of the current, okay, because we have a wire in there now. And so that was I times L cross B DT, all right, and here L was uh, D uh, times Z hat. And then, of course, cross B, which is BX hat, push that through, then you get Z cross X. Again, that comes back to a Y hat, but B and D are, uh, um, what am I looking for? B and D are constants, so we push them outside the integral. However, I can be written as the change, the rate of change of Q per time, hence the negative DQ DT, since we're draining and discharging, it has to have a negative there. And the DTs cancel, so what we're left with is a negative sign out front of the integral, B, D, Y hat, and then the integral of zero to infinity of dq, all right? Well, we know that the charge at infinity is clearly zero because it's, you know, it's uh, draining. And then the charge originally is what we had to start with. But you see how the negative sign implements there, so they cancel out, and we're left with bqd in the y hat direction. But the original field was E equals sigma over epsilon naught, which sigma being the surface charge density was q over a. So then we end up with the electric field of Q over A epsilon naught. And then if we solve this for Q, what we see is that we get Q is equal to E A epsilon naught. So therefore, we can say that the impulse is B Q D in the Y direction or sub in Q. We have B A E epsilon naught D times D in the Y hat direction, which is exactly what we found from the uh, uh, electromagnetic momentum. So as you see, uh, we have a lot of things that are crossing over, and these are highlighting the exact same things. Again, two ways to get there. One's a force, one's a field density, but we get the same result. Mechanisms change a little bit, but that's nice to know. More options, the better.